How you doing? Welcome to Baylor College of Medicine. I hope your first couple of weeks have been uh, okay. I hope that you're starting to enjoy the, the first year. I uh, hope that you're keeping your head above water. Um, I wanted to catch you um, after, um, after you've gotten underway and hopefully as you start to settle into a rhythm uh, because I want to talk to you about uh, reading and about medical knowledge and hopefully st uh, set you off on the right path uh, for your next five years here, here or uh, more if you're in the research track or the global track. Uh, medical knowledge is important. It is no less important to continue developing your medical knowledge now compared to in medical school. Uh, it is in a lot of ways a little easier in that it's a much more focused uh, area. Um, that said, it's probably no less the total amount of information uh, is probably no less. Uh, you do have to go pretty deep into a, a relatively focused uh, area compared to, uh, compared to medical school. Uh, you're going to learn a lot on rotations. Um, you're going to learn a lot doing cases, seeing patients. Those things are really very, very important, critical. Um, but at the same time, it's not enough. You have to read. Uh, to go through the five years of residency and not read, not read consistently, is you end up uh, uh, as a de facto uh, apprentice and not, uh, you know, it's just not ideal. It's not a, ideal in a few ways. Uh, first of all, you're just subjected to, you know, whatever patients you end up seeing, whatever operations you end up doing. The teaching that you receive ends up just being ad hoc. On most rotations, there's not a set curriculum of, okay, week one, we're gonna go through this, week two, we're gonna go through this. PGY2s need to understand this, PGY4s need to understand that. You know, you just end up, you're in a case, you're seeing consults and you talk, you may talk about that patient, you may talk about things that are relevant and important, but there, it's, it's not typical that you're gonna go through all the things that you need to know uh, in a particular area. Uh, and it's, I can promise you that it will affect you or it's gonna improve, it will benefit your ability to provide clinical care. Uh, it will uh, change your perceptions. It will, um, your, your mind will pay attention to different things. Uh, you'll ask different questions. Uh, I can't tell you how many ways it will, will benefit you. I think a perfect example uh, that uh, uh, comes up, uh, I, I, I use the example a lot, uh, the entity of pyoderma gangrenosa. Uh, you, may, you may have heard of it, uh, you may have forgotten what it is, you may not have heard of it. Uh, by the time you're at least a PGY4, uh, uh, you probably will uh, have forgotten about it. And if you haven't read, it, read about it, you are at risk at least of getting into the uh, situation where you see a patient uh, with a wound, you know, you debride it, you treat it the way we would typically treat it as surgeons, and it's not getting better. And you do the same thing, you just do, you do more of the same. If you don't even, if you've never even heard of pyoderma gangrenosa, you don't know what it is, don't have it, you know, it's not gonna register with you, you will not, you're, you're literally gonna be blind to the possibility of that problem. Uh, and this is just one example, you know, other, other pathologies, other problems. Uh, there's, there's plenty of other examples where you uh, see a presentation, you're seeing these signs, symptoms, uh, lab values, maybe imaging studies, um, you know, allowing, to, uh, allowing yourself to develop a more robust uh, differential diagnosis, a uh, wider variety of uh, operations, uh, techniques, ways to uh, treat a particular problem. Uh, it's really going to broaden your horizons, alter your perceptions, and it's going to make you a, a, a very good surgeon. Uh, and that's what we want. Uh, everyone here should be in the, the pursuit of excellence. Uh, so that uh, I think it's going to be an important thing. Uh, some residents in the, the past have, um, uh, I think most people on some level buy into the importance of medical knowledge whether or not the in-service exam, the ABSITE, the American Board of Surgery in-service in training exam, uh, this yearly exam that you're gonna take every year, probably again in January, uh, whether or not that is an important metric, whether or not the scores themselves have any importance, 
whether or not that is, the number, you know, whether or not that is a good uh, barometer of medical knowledge. Uh, and uh, let me uh, suffice to say that it, it's important for, for a few different reasons. Uh, let me give you just a few. One, if you're applying to fellowships, uh, they're going to look at the scores. And you don't necessarily need to be in the top 10th percentile, you know, 90 plus percentile. But if you're on the very bottom end of the scale, that could be a red flag. Um, it is linked to, it's, it's associated with, there is some correlation with how you will do on your written boards exam. Uh, and here too, on the lower end of the scale, uh, scores that are below the 30th percentile from the app site, that has been linked to a higher rate for failure of the written boards. Um, it's not a one-to-one uh, -one correlation. Uh, we've, we've had people in our program who have at times scored below 30th percentile in the past, uh, and at times people who have uh, not been in that uh, um, range and have uh, had uh, problems first time around uh, passing. But there is that correlation, and not just within our program, it's been described nationally. That, that, that is something that uh, uh, is a known relationship. Uh, so use it as a metric, use it as feedback along the way. Uh, think it of, uh, you know, if you've ever uh, uh, run a track race, think it a, of it as your split times going around the track where you are at a given point in time, whether you are behind where you want to be, need to be, should be, versus uh, uh, you know, hopefully uh, staying up with the, the pace that uh, you want to set. Uh, so uh, it's, it's worthwhile, uh, the app site you should pay attention to. Now the main way to uh, optimize your success for app site and for building medical knowledge uh, in your formation as a surgeon is to read. Uh, still in 2020, uh, the best strategy overall is uh, that you read and read consistently. Uh, the reading materials that you use, uh, they do matter. And I'll first describe what's typically been the reading curriculum here. And I think probably at a lot of surgery programs like ours, where first year you try to get through a lot of one of the three main uh, foundational textbook and, textbooks in surgery, either the Sabiston textbook, uh, the Schwartz textbook, or the Greenfield textbook these big, you know, thousand plus page tomes on surgery. Uh, those books are really important because they go through pathophysiology, normal physiology, anatomy, embryology. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all there. All the uh, foundational stuff is there. Uh, so those are, that, that really lays a, a very good, firm, solid foundation uh, during your first and maybe your second year. Uh, so that's to, to start off with uh, second year. A lot of times people would then uh, bring in some Merino, the ICU book, uh, and then the Maddox, the, um, um, the, the trauma, uh, the, the small handbook. I'm blanking on the, the name of it. Uh, I want to say behind the knife, but that's not it. Um, uh, those two books during second year. And then third year, third year is a pivotal year clinically uh, because that's when you get more into a leadership role uh, where you're making uh, management decisions as a, the primary person making management decisions. During that year, the Cameron textbook, the current surgical therapy textbook is overall the best book you could get. Uh, carrying that into fourth year, uh, for you know, continue to making uh, continue making management of plans, uh, seeing patients post-op care as well is you know, very good for that. Fourth and fifth year, as you get more and more into the operating room, uh, one of the uh, textbooks that uh, focuses more on technique, mastery of surgery has has been uh, one of the the. Uh, uh, canonical texts on technique. It's a two. It used to be. A, it's been a two-volume set, hard copy. Uh, now I think yeah, there's an online version. There's a few other uh, textbooks that uh, are focused on technique. 
So you might use those a little bit more during your third and fourth year. Uh, just one brief aside for technique during your third year, the Zollinger textbook is a pretty good mix of very concise, it's had a pretty good uh, coverage of most of the things that are common in general surgery programs, uh, the, the operations. Uh, so that's a, a good, you know, not quite as uh, uh, much information as mastery, but pretty good book. Here, starting out first year, you don't yet need any of those. When you are in the operating room, you're going to be working on the uh, basic techniques, the blocking and tackling, so to speak. Uh, you know, just playing the notes uh, uh, to make a musical instrument uh, analogy. Uh, not yet uh, you know, learning a full uh, song uh, from start to finish, uh, but just, uh, you know, not tying, bowing, maybe some aspects of uh, dissection and exposure, uh, assisting, uh, first assist on a lot of things. Uh, those are really uh, important tasks. Uh, so, you know, what I'm trying to say is first year, just get into, just get one of the uh, main textbooks I mentioned again, Saviston, Schwartz, or Greenfield. Um, I would recommend the hard copy because from my understanding, there's a, uh, there is some data that a hard copy that your ability to uh, remember the, the uh, percentage that sticks with you is a little bit higher with a hard copy rather than a digital copy. But there are some benefits to be gained from a digital copy, portability being one of them. Uh, but just get uh, access to one of those texts. Um, if you get a used copy and a, a maybe even just one uh, edition off, not the most recent, but uh, one edition prior, you might be able to save some money uh, if that is a, a consideration. For digital copy, I think at least the Schwartz textbook, I believe you can access through our library. Um, so you have access to at least uh, one of, of them online. Uh, but you get one of those textbooks and a plan to get through the majority of it during this year. Uh, now, uh, here's the challenge. How to fit in reading in a consistent way in your already busy uh, surgical schedule. Uh, you're going to have a long days. Uh, you're, uh, when you get home, you are going to probably want to eat. Uh, and then after that, you're going to be uh, feeling very tired. Uh, you're probably going to be functioning at a level where you're uh, relatively and chronically sleep deprived. Uh, so uh, that is a setup for, it's going to be a challenge at least. Uh, so find ways to try to overcome those challenges. Um, first, to make it consistent, uh, some kind of visual uh, progress is a tool that can be very helpful. If you have a paper calendar, if you have a wall calendar, something that you're looking at every day where you can just do a little bar and then, you know, you okay, Monday I read, you know, fill it in. You know, trying to shoot for at least five days out of seven. Uh, where you're reading and I would I would recommend you aim for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day on the days that you read uh, So would that be two and a half hours total per week? So if you have a really busy week and you haven't read much during the week, but you do an hour on Saturday uh, Maybe do you've done an hour on Friday uh, You know you can try to uh, catch up a little bit, but uh, overall uh, Reading you know relatively consistently and not having what you really want to avoid is you want to have no months where you've gone, you know, two or three weeks. It's at the end of the month. You're towards the end of a rotation. It's been a busy rotation and you haven't even cracked open a textbook. Uh, you are uh, just stalled uh, in the water while the other books are going by you. Um, and not that it is competitive, but, you know, it's just an analogy to say, you have to make continued progress. You have to keep up uh, and not, you're losing ground if you have a, a month like that. So I really try to minimize months like that. Um, other things that can help, trying to fit in reading during the day. Uh, that's something that I've been talking with uh, uh, a lot of residents about doing. Um, it's challenging. Again, there is, most rotations, you don't have much downtime. 
Uh, most rotations are busy, but at the same time, I do think that if you tried, you could work in some time where you're finding 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, where you know maybe you're eating some lunch, and then rather than checking Twitter, um, uh, you know, TikTok or whatever, YouTube, uh, you, at least uh, non-educational YouTube, uh, you are spending time in front of your book. If you do have one of those, you know, three pound textbooks and it's uh, either you don't want to carry back and forth from your car to the call room or the call room's not secure, you don't want to leave it in the call room. Then one thing I would recommend is either Xerox copy uh, a few pages or just take with your cell phone, just take a picture of, you know, there's an important table, you know, something that you want to memorize. You want to memorize, you know, uh, gut hormones. You want to uh, memorize a flow diagram, an algorithm for how to work up a um, pancreatic cystic mass. Uh, you want to remember uh, a cross section in the, the four compartments of the calf. You know, some things that are really, uh, so I, I guess the things that these uh, have in common, not text, or maybe some text that is just really so critical that you want to commit it to memory. You know, take a couple pictures and things like that, and then you have, you know, 10 minutes, you're waiting for a case to get started, they're inducing the patient. You know, open up your phone, look at your your uh, screenshot, look at your image, and just commit it to memory. Uh, so you can work in some some time in front of the textbook in that way. Um, so you know, just find out and find ways. Maybe reading in the morning. Most of the time, we're starting very early in the morning, so most of the time, it's really hard to to do that. But consider it. You know, whatever it takes to uh, get you in front of the textbook in a consistent way, in a time when you're awake, you can pay attention, you're not gonna be interrupted, uh, minimized uh, interruptions, uh, that is going to spell success. Now, other tools, there are uh, more and more tools that uh, exist or are being created to try to help you. Um, I still feel strongly that uh, reading is the most important thing and the data that is out there again my understanding of the literature the surgical education literature that's out there on uh, success for the upside and success for boards uh, does it seem to indicate that reading reading a textbook specifically uh, is the single uh, most important determinant and in fact in at least one large nationwide study with a very large sample size. Uh, residents who used study questions and score in particular, or at least for this study, they focused on score questions. People who used score questions as their primary source of trying to read, that was uh, associated with a uh, significantly lower AMSITE score. Uh, so for these resources, what I would suggest is that you use them to supplement your reading, use them to augment your reading, use them to clarify certain points, to emphasize certain points. Uh, there is, um, when it comes to learning, there is benefit to uh, seeing things in different, or getting it in in different modalities. You've read it, now you're going to hear about it in a, in a podcast. Uh, or in a, a YouTube video, uh, have it explained in a different way. You know, an author wrote about it in one particular way, and now you're going to hear somebody talk about it while they're showing their slides on, um, you know, one of our videos or on the Behind the Knife podcast. Uh, there is benefit to that, but don't use the, those things as substitutes. Uh, it's tempting because you can listen to a podcast while you're uh, driving home and you're, you're washing your dishes. Those are good things, you know, good use of time uh, as long as you're not distracted from the road. Uh, but again, it, it should not substitute for your reading. You still need to read. Uh, just use those things to, to um, augment uh, what you're doing. And then finally, on rotations, make use of as many opportunities as you can to ask questions, discuss topics, 
Um, you know, again, clarifying, reinforcing, if, even if you feel like it's a topic that you understand well, um, you know, maybe teach it to uh, medical students and by going through it, it's another repetition, it will force you to uh, categorize and organize your thoughts on a particular topic to, to be able to explain it to a medical student. If it's something that you're just going through, you're learning, you know, just doing some repetitions, ask your chief resident, ask your co-intern, hey, let's review this. Have you been reading about this? Let's go through this. Um, uh, if it's something that you don't understand, ask your chief, ask a fellow for some services, ask your the faculty that you're working with, hey, you know, help me explain, help me understand this, or you know, I don't understand why you know, we're doing this in this situation, but in this other situation, this is the best treatment talking about it it will again reinforce it the the physical place you know the time the people the physical place where you talk about that that goes into your memory and it actually helps you remember I, there's still times I, I remember in Bent Hob, one of the uh, fourth floor um, little stations there in front of patient charts when they used to be paper charting uh, talking about uh, duodenal ulcers. Um, you know, these things are important. Don't separate, you know, okay, I'm going to read at home, I'm going to read in the call room, and then when I'm talking about patients, you know, I'm going through this consult with the on-call surgeon, it's different. You know, link those things, make, you know, make use of the time, make use of the expertise, make use of the reading and understanding that uh, uh, other people have uh, to your benefit. Uh, so uh, again, just to summarize, start off on a on a good foot. Uh, this is a really crucial year. Uh, you're going to be busy. You're going to be working hard, and, but try to uh, create a time in your schedule where you're reading consistently, reading from one of the main foundational textbooks. Uh, I hope to check in with you uh, during the year. Please contact me if you feel like you're having trouble with your schedule it's it's busy and that's very understandable um, i enjoy trying to to help out uh, seeing how i can uh, think about some uh, tactics or strategies where um, you can succeed with reading consistently because i want to see you uh, succeed on the upside succeed in the boards and then go out and be a uh, successful outstanding uh, surgeon in practice all right good luck thank you